Well, this is uh, Firefox OS, our new HTML5 based uh, operating system for smartphones. Um, this is a ZTE Open, which is a device that Telefonica will be releasing in Brazil later this year. So this is really going to be shipping. Um, there were partnered, uh, we had a press conference uh, on Sunday where we announced that we're working with, I think it's now 24 um, handset manufacturers and, uh, and operators uh, to bring these handsets into to users, um, our, our, especially in emerging markets. Our first focus is primarily on emerging markets, so this one will be in Brazil, there will be another in uh, some parts of Eastern Europe soon. Um, let me pull this up here. So as I mentioned, it's an entirely HTML5 based um, operating system, which means that everything you see here, the way you switch between uh, home screens, all the apps, uh, down to you know our map solution, which is Nokia uh, here maps, all of this is all written in HTML5 and JavaScript. Which means that really HTML5 apps are the native apps of this platform. Uh, we know already that on a lot of other of other platforms, people are building apps largely uh, in HTML5 and then giving them native wrappers to install them. Um, but here we don't need to do that. So we're surfacing a lot of the device capabilities that developers need, like being able to use the camera or the accelerometer uh, through JavaScript directly to web app developers. So everything you see here is an HTML5 app. So we already have a lot of tier one uh, apps like Facebook and Twitter, Box. A lot of them are coming really quickly now because, of course, it's extremely easy. Most of these people already have a great HTML5 online app. It's, it's trivial to uh, package it up so that people can install it locally on the phone. And also, I mentioned that people are already building a lot of their apps in HTML5 and giving it a wrapper. We don't need the wrapper here, so a lot of them are 80% done already. So I think we're going to see a lot of apps very soon on the phone. Now, any platform is only about as good as the apps it has, so we're giving people a couple of ways to get apps. One is our Firefox Marketplace. It's sort of a traditional marketplace um, experience that you'd be familiar with. You can buy you can buy apps here, you can download free apps here, and they install locally. You don't need to be online. They install just like apps on any other platform. Uh, web apps, we just mean the technologies that are being used. Um, and we're also doing something a little bit different that brings a little bit of the, the power of the web um, to this phone. So let me let me give you an example of what I mean here. This is something that we're calling, uh, the network in here is not very good. So this is something that we're called, calling dynamic app search. So let me give you an example. If I, if I tap in here and say I've got a YouTube song stuck in my head, I need to listen to some U2. Um, I can search for U2. And you start to see some apps come up. So it looks like an app search. Now what's interesting is that I search for U2, but none of these is a U2 app. None of them is called U2. The reason these are, are surfacing is because they all have content that relates to U2. So this is the thing we're used to from the web. You can search deeply into content for things and find what you're looking for. Not as much a thing that you can do on mobile at the moment. So it's great for discoverability, right? I Maybe I never heard of SoundCloud. I never would have known to go looking for it. Um, but I know now that they've got a lot of YouTube content, so I can tap on it and launch it. Now, what we're doing here is a little bit different. Um, in the marketplace, I mentioned that you can install HTML5 apps locally. They're like regular apps on your phone. What we're doing here is we're getting the best online mobile app experiences, and we're kind of packaging them up in a more user-friendly mobile way. They feel more like apps. And here we're suffering from the network a little bit. But as soon as this comes up, that's, it's less fun. But we can, like, if we pull up Wikipedia, you know, there is some data problem with this thing. The, the phone on the other side is orange too. Let me just grab that. And you take it, rip out the it. Oh, did it come up? Okay. So I can just. So as soon as this comes up, I can just use it. Use it here. Now, what's different again is this is we're pulling this from the web, um, and you can use it in place. And you didn't have to install it. So another thing about apps is that, like if sometimes if I want to use an app, even just for like one minute, just to check something, I have to get an app and install it, and later I have to uninstall it. This gives you the ability to use things a little, in a way that's a little bit more like the web. You can just use them in place, and when you're done, you're done. But of course, if you really love it, you can long tap and uh, save it to your home screen. So we're giving people two different ways to get at content. One of them is a traditional app store where you can buy or download free apps and install them to your phone. And the other is to get at a lot of the great content that's on the web but in an appier way. Which is amazing because there is so much more stuff out there on the web than in any market. We're also, from a user's perspective, we're doing some interesting things with the way we integrate social. So if I go into my contacts book, you'll see that a lot of these uh, contacts have been imported from Facebook. And I can do that directly from the app. I didn't have to use a Facebook app to do that. It's, right, it's built in. And what's interesting is that it's more than just an import of my contacts. 
I can go in and I can do things like messaging on Facebook or doing wall posts directly from directly from my contacts. It's like, and then we don't. And if you do ask me for it. Now, finally, what's really um, what's really amazing about this platform also is that it's completely customizable. It's an open platform. Um, others can take it and add things to it that they think make it better. So one thing that Telefonica has done for their Brazilian market, they know that a lot of users in Brazil are very cost conscious about data usage. So they built a cost control app that lets people uh, track their data use and set thresholds and things like that. Um, but even more interesting, because you can do that on other platforms, but here, they've actually integrated their cost control functionality into the OS itself. And so suddenly, now because uh, Telefonica knows that this is a need in Brazil, there's an OS that has integrated uh, cost control, which isn't the case of any of the other, uh, other major mobile platforms. So it's great for users, they can get features that are really built for their own parts of the world, um, which doesn't happen very much otherwise.